Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today we're in the garage. Um, it's a Sunday and today for the first time ever one of my videos um, has not been uploaded for the plain and simple fact um, there was no audio on it. Um, I went back, checked everything. During the upload process I don't know what's happened but the audio has been lost, detached, whatever you want to call it. It's gone. Um, so this morning I had to pull it, I've gone back, revisited it and uh, yeah it's missing, all the audio is missing. So I need to make it again but rather than make it again um, I thought I would just start from scratch. So today we're in the garage, um, that project's still ongoing if I haven't told you about it we're building a shower and a bathroom in the corner because next door we have an annex and uh, that needs needs to have its own bathroom. Winter has basically mugged us this week. Um, hasn't been too bad, but yesterday it was really, really clear blue skies. This morning we we, we woke up to frost, and uh, I went out and I shot up the mountains. And I'll, I'll drop a little bit of that video in now. Um, absolutely loved it. Found a new place. Found a place that I've never been to before, and uh, I would I don't think I would have ever gone there. If somebody hadn't put like a, a kissing gate in but you'll see that in the video anyway it's just a short bit but i hope you like it just uh waiting for the sun to come up come out in the van there it is i've just tucked it in off the side of the road as you can see there's a bit of frost on the road it's nice and refreshing this morning so i've got a brew from greg's but while i was out driving i've just found this so this is a little kissing gate, and uh, let me zoom out a little bit. Somebody's spending a lot of money putting these gates in, and but I'm gonna have a walk up there and see what the view's like, because <laughs> even though I live here, I have no idea what it looks like from up there. You know, this is about three miles from my house. But what we'll do is we'll have a little walk up and uh, have a look. I didn't bother with the kissing gate, I just come through that gate and made sure it was locked behind in case there's any stock in the field. Now I've not got the best footwear on and I'm regretting the choice already. I've got some trainers on, look, look. Right, let me show you. Right, I've got trainers on and they are slick on the bottom. And you just don't get how steep that is. So this could get a bit interesting. I've got boots in the van if I can't get the first little bit. But we'll see. Might be interesting coming down, because that, let me pan around. That is how steep it is, kind of, if you look up that line there. But, uh, I expect it to get interesting. But I want to get up there before the, before the sun comes up. Oh, not too bad so far. We'll get interested in a minute. <laughs> it's a little bit steeper up here. Well, I'm up. <sighs> took my took my breath away because I just did it in one hit. I just went for it. <sighs> it's nice. That was my stomach. Definitely worth the walk. That's all I'm going to say. Brilliant. The view is amazing. <laughs> Do you want to look? So that is Bath and Sweat Lake. The two little headlights in the middle. That is the uh, the Orient Express, I think it was, in the past life, or part of it. That is a, a train set in the woods. That's now a restaurant. The hill behind is Skidder. This here, um, that bit's Coombe, or, or Withered. There you go. The rest of the Western Fells. Mm. 
this video is all about um, the updates that are coming from VW and, well, not, they're not coming from VW, that's a lie. They're coming from Mercedes. Now, um, everybody knows that the VW Crafter is a Mercedes Sprinter. It was built under licence and um, for about 10 years, Mercedes Daimler, that's the group that build the Crafter and the Sprinter, they, had, they did a collaboration with VW and it was a very successful collaboration. But in 2013, there was um, not a falling out, but VW decided to go their own way and didn't want to extend that collaboration any longer. So at that time, nobody knew that they were going with MEN. But that's where they are now, the with MEN. Um, and that's the new style crafters that you see running around now. The Mercedes Sprinter is still being built, it's still the same vehicle, still coming off the same production line, it just has a little tweak here and there, a bit of styling, stuff like that. But as a consequence, going back 10 years now to 2013, there must have been, I've tried to find out all this information um, from Mercedes, but didn't really get to speak to anybody who knew anything about it. But back in 2013, there must have been a line drawn in the sand. Right, you don't want to collaborate with us anymore. Ten years from now, we're going to stop making spare parts. Or we're not going to honour the parts as per our agreement. Just hold that thought, right. So 2013... 10 years, fast forward to 10 years, 2023, and we're all going around upplating our vehicles. Um, we've decided, yeah, we need that extra bit of capacity. And you know me, I, I try to make it a little bit, <laughs> try to push the boundaries a little bit. And obviously we got our van up to 4,230 kilos. That's gonna be a problem in the future. That is a weight that will not be achievable in the future. Keep listening to this video and I'll tell you why. Right, I've had to put you on the tripod. Um, my arm was getting sore. I've been working this morning. I've been doing some lights, painting them, tidying things up and uh, my arm was a bit sore. Anyway, let's crack on with uh, telling you what's happening. So you may recall, um, if you follow Neil and Emma, Urban Van Life, they had trouble uplating their van so they followed everything I did, and me and Neil had a good chat about how to get it uplated and everything that needed to happen. Because of what's happening with Mercedes and VW, that is now affecting the spare part. So the part that we listed, and uh, I'll put it in one of these corners, um, the part that we listed is no longer classed as a five-ton spring. It's been downrated for want of a better word. It's now classed as a three and a half ton spring. So if you're wanting to fit this spring just to give you the ride height and the aesthetics, the look, um, it's still good for that, really good for that. It, uh, it is a five ton spring in all like <laughs> reasoning. It's still a five ton spring, but Mercedes have decided to down rate it. So it's now classed as a three and a half ton spring. Unfortunately. Now, if you're trying to use that spring to uplate your vehicle to 4,230 kilos, you won't be able to achieve that because it's limited to its three and a half ton specs. Now, if you want to uplate your van to 4,030 kilos, that's great. The main part of the uplating process, you gain additional weight on your axle, your rear axle, your front axle, if you fit this spring, in the past you've been able to achieve another 200 kilograms on your front axle. Now, realistically, uplating and upgrading the rear suspension is enough. That'll get you 4,230 kilos. If you want to do it for looks and give that extra little bit of height, you need to add a bigger weight carrying spring in. So that's why we've been adding these springs in, because in all honesty, we want that look and we want the extra carrying capacity. We want the big wheels on there, we want the big tyres, we want the gap between the wheel arch and the tyre. So that's why we've done it. Neil had a problem 
Neil and Emma from Urban Van Life had a problem when they were upplating their vehicle. So they got to the point where they were submitting the paperwork, they'd done all the work, they'd done exactly the same as I had. We'd had a good dialogue about how to do it and what was required and all the changes I'd made and me and Neil had a chat about doing some other um, changes by having the rubbers in that go with the uh, leaf spring. But when they submitted their paperwork, they couldn't get it through. Now, I couldn't understand why that happened and Neil couldn't understand why that happened. So I had to start doing a bit of digging and through conversations with um, certain companies, we got to the bottom of it and it all come about because of this end of a collaboration. Nobody knew it was coming, 10 years in, boom. This year, 10 years, 2023, Mercedes started downrating all this gear. So there is other parts being affected, um, but this is the main one concerns us, this channel. What I've done stands, my, um, my spring at the time was the right spring. Um, it was the right part at the, that time. Now it isn't the right part. So the right part number is this one here. And that's what you need to be looking for. And I'll be honest with you, you're going to struggle. Unless you buy a brand new one, you're going to struggle. Um, we've brought these in from all over the world at the minute. You know, anybody that's actually fitted one of these new plates, these new springs, I'm thinking ahead here, anyone that's fitted one of these new springs has actually had to import them. I've not heard of anybody that's found one in this country. So bear that in mind as well. I'm going to give you a quick summary of how the upplating process works. There's two ways of doing it. So the first way, one company... Um, I'm not going to promote anybody on this video because there's no need. I think we all know who the two companies are. So the first company uses what they call a model. So basically they went out, they took one vehicle, they upplated it, they converted it and they stick to that model. With them you can get 4,030 kilograms as an upplate and that is it. But the stipulation is your vehicle must already be registered as a motorhome before they will do any upplating on it. So that's kind of like limiting the amount of people that can use it because a lot of us are still classed as a van with windows. Um, bizarre, I know. You know, my name had motorhome wrote down the side of it. But it is what it is. We will revisit that at another time. The other company works on individual basis. So they will take every vehicle and look at it individually and judge it on its own merits and build up a report on what that vehicle is, the specifications that vehicle is built to. So this is the crucial part. Everybody thinks that these vans roll off the production line and they're exactly the same. They're not. Each van has a build spec. So this other company is a member of multiple different groups and engineering groups and that entitles them to certain information. And this is the information that has started becoming a problem and this is the information that has filtered through to stop people using this part now. So that's where, that's where it affected Neil and Emma that company that they were using is privy to all this information. Um, they pay for this information, and as a result, they use that information to give the best estimates and calculations that they can for your vehicle. And that's to keep you on the right side of the law, the right side of insurance companies. So, because if something did happen and your vehicle's involved in an accident, it might affect your insurance, it might affect prosecution and stuff like that because if you've built this vehicle you then become the designer of it and if you've installed a part that isn't quite right or isn't fit for purpose and it fails and causes an accident you're going to be the guy at the other end footing the bill. Bearing all that in mind I tell everybody that I meet and everybody that I talk to now early engagement if you're planning to upplate your vehicle early engagement with these companies Company one or company two, you decide. Company one, you're limited for 
4,030 kilograms. Company two is 4,230 kilograms. But here's another bit of information. The 4,230 is gonna get harder and harder and harder to achieve. And this is because as all these parts change, it's gonna affect the calculations that come out and the predictions that are made by this company. So not to be a doom and gloom, dark cloud person, you're gonna to have to manage your expectations. The 4230 is gonna become a thing of the past, I believe, and talking to these industry guys, I understand the reason and why. Um, obviously, when we do our upgrades and our modifications to this vehicle, the one thing we're not doing is the brakes. There's very limited um, changes you can make to the brakes. I am looking into that. I am. I have spoken to someone on the other side of the world who's put me on to an idea, and I'm going to try and develop that idea. And if it works, I will share that information. But until I know it works, I'm not going to do that. So there you go. 4230 might be a thing of the past. Um, hopefully it isn't, but please manage your expectations. Early engagement with these companies, that's the key thing. That will save you time, it will save you money, and you'll know straight from the beginning what you can achieve. I'm waffling on now. I've said what I needed to say. Um, unfortunately, this video hasn't gone out when I intended it to. Um, it's just one of the things. Stuff happens, I can't, you know, this is all just new to me. It's all still school days and learning curves and I'm trying my hardest to make it right and invest in equipment to make it work better for you. But it was this bugger that let me down yesterday. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't be tapping that. You'll be all deaf now. This is what let me down. There was no audio. For some reason, it had unpaired itself. Anyway, it is what it is. So a quick summary, 4230, might be a thing of the past. Um, if you're planning to upplate or in your, if you're in the process of upplating and you haven't contacted one of these upplating companies, please make that connection. Ring them up, make the initial inquiry, get the paperwork through, fill it out, send it back to them and they will assess what weight you can achieve. At the end of the day, I don't want people wasting their time, wasting their money. And this is why I do these videos, to try and help people. I've wasted a shitload of money on this van, making mistakes. And I just want to share my processes, my thoughts and my experiences with you guys. And hopefully that filters through and hopefully you guys save a bit of money and you get the best build you can possibly get from, from the information that I give you. Anyway, this is the end of another video. I hope you've liked it. Please start commenting. We've noticed that a lot of you are watching the videos. You're not commenting. You're not giving it the thumbs up. And that really counts for us. Um, we've noticed the tailing off of uh, subscribers as well. If you're watching this video, and I know 60% of you are watching this video and you're not subscribers, please hit the subscribe button. We're trying to keep you updated. We're trying to keep you informed. We're trying to help. Um, if we get the word out there to everybody, it'll make life a lot easier. But anyway, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate all the questions that we get. And I try to respond to everybody. But anyway, till next time, take care. And we'll see you again. So this is some of the footage from yesterday. And this is a part that I couldn't leave out. Um, we got to meet a subscriber yesterday. And we got to meet somebody special. His dog, Ted. That's Mark. That's Ted. So Ted is a mammoth Old English Bulldog and he's absolutely gorgeous. He's got a lovely demeanour, he's absolutely brilliant, very friendly and I just I just love his furry ears. <laughs> They're cool and he is, it, well he loves, look at him, he loves it. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant, I love Ted, beautiful dog, absolutely beautiful. Why not head over and check out our new website, www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok and our Facebook group, The Crafty Blinder Van Builds. Thanks for watching.